Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sana channel, my name is Shanks. In today we are going to cast a 2v2 replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06, but this time not on the map Anorian. I was searching for a long time, but I think you guys also got kinda bit sick of Anorian, which is sadly the most played map in BFME 1. So we have Gondor and Isengard against Mordor and Mordor. Double Mordor against Gondor Isengard, which is of course a tough matchup for the Double Mordor team. Because Gondor Isengard is one of the strongest combinations in a 2v2 match, but you can get in battle for Middle Earth 1. So we have the green Isengard player, yellow Gondor player against the orange Mordor player and purple Mordor player. This is the map Emin Mule by the way, if you guys don't know this map. Uh, which you potentially don't, because again, most of the matches are on the map Anurian. Soldiers are fighting the Golem, and the good thing about this matchup for the double Mordor team is they have double Golem, and double Golem are gonna be on these soldiers all the time which hopefully will buy them enough time to protect those Lamremiers. And also the bad thing about the evil factions in this map is that you don't have many trees around your settlement. And that's kind of bad because you will need trees to be able to harvest them with your Lamremiers workers to turn them into resources. With a troll layer behind on each side. And kind of a very strange map, you know? I don't like this map to be honest that much, but it's something different. It's always a refreshment to see something brand new, not always the same thing over and over again. And also this Isengard player is building multiple uh, towers. I believe he's kind of scared that he might get rushed. He doesn't want to lose the game. And Mordor in the meantime was losing the settlement already to the Urukai. Which is really bad because as you guys can see he has only one single settlement outside. I will be used already. Heal has been used from the soldiers or from the Gonzo player rather. And of course the soldiers with the help of Peregrine Took will be able to win this fight. No problemo. And Mordor is kind of weak early game, but once you reach the mid game, maybe you can make something happen. And again, as Mordor, you need to win this matchup as soon as possible because once Isengard player will be getting the freezing rain, all your leadership bonuses, with that also your throws are gonna become completely useless. They will get one shotted. Gondor is building a stable, which you will need to be able to fight for the map control with the Gondor Knights. And later on, you will also need to collect the power points for Gandalf the White. Hobbit is hitting level 2 and hitting extremely hard, of course. Orcs are for free, as you guys know, but they are also kind of the, the weakest units in, the, in battle for middle of one. And also the recruit time from them is kind of long. And eventually, if you want to be able to fight for the map control, Orcs are not going to be enough. However, you can always build a second Orc Pit to be able to get a bit more units on the field. So this Mordor player is in a much, much better shape than this Mordor player who was losing the settlement quite early. And this is also under control from the Isengard player for now, which is great because remember Lamremiers in BFME 1 are giving you the Woods bonus, which is making your buildings inside your castle cheaper. And two furnaces into the Uruk pit. I believe that's a bit too early. I would go for third or fourth furnace before the Uruk pit just to be, just to make sure that your eco is great. And also Karuskas, the Gondor player, is asking his ally for help because Dunedain, one of the model players, was also buying this settlement with the Oryx. But we have of course Gondor Knights on the field. Karuskas is asking for Warchant, I'm assuming. Warchant is increasing your damage and armor by 50%, which is really great on those Gondor Knights, especially once you are in the mid game, which, which means you have the Night Shields and Forge Blades and Heavy Armor. In combination with that and Warchant, your Gondor Knights are gonna hit like an absolute truck and destroy everything on their path. Remember, the slaughterhouses are one of the weakest, if not the weakest, uh, you know, buildings in battle for middle of one, so destroying them is kind of quite easy. However, the orange model player is trying to creep the troll layer. He's going to capture this outpost and put those Haradrims on top of that. With that, he has a great protection, which means Gondor Knights, you know, also the Gondor player generally, can't commit to that fight. And with that, you can actually build an orc pit maybe, get some more orcs on the field just to be annoying. Remember, Mordo is able to get power points from losing orcs, which is pretty nice. So Warchan has been used on these two Gondor Knights. Uh, he will try to creep the strong layer with those Gondor Knights and potentially steal the money. When you get behind the layer, I think in a, you are in a safe spot. But he is still being targeted, as you guys can see. And Haradrims are hit hitting also very hard. But the money and the creep is going to be secured by the Gondor player, which is great because remember, eventually he will need the power points for Gandalf the White because Gandalf the Grey is kind of useless. The troll is going to be able, able to scare those Gondor Knights away. 
The Moro player is still in a really bad spot. He has only three slaughterhouses inside the base. He was just able to recover his meal he lost at the beginning of the game. But also Isengard is kind of in a bad spot. And that's what I was saying, you know, build like three, four furnaces before the Uruk pit. Uruk pit was a bit too early. And the pressure is real. RPO, the green Isengard player, will be losing this meal because there is no protection for now. I is also being able to boost your damage by 50% as well as your combat experience by 100%. The Golden Knights, they won't make it there in time. The mill is getting demolished. During all this time, the Orange Motor player was also able to creep the troll layer behind, which means additional money. He has now a troll cage on the field, which he also will need in order to be able to defend against the combos from Isengard as well as against the Gondor Knights from the Gondor player. And also, he is the richest person, I believe, right now in the game, which means he will have, he will have to also help, help out his ally. I can't even talk, sorry for that. Alright, so a lot of pressure though. Look at uh, the purple motor player was able to recover. He was also able to get a settlement right here. Orc pit for orange motor player. Just to be able to be a bit more annoying once again. Mordor has access to the industry from the spellbook. And the good thing about the double evil faction is that you can use the industry also on the base from your ally. That means, for example, the purple motor player might uh, might receive two boosts from, from his ally and from himself, you know which both increases the resource income from those slaughter houses by 100%. So, long story short, 6 slaughter houses are gonna act like 12, which means your money is gonna skyrocket. And a lot of pressure, Karuskas is asking his ally to recapture this, he knows his ally is kinda in a bad spot, no armory coming up just yet, the pressure is real, and Mordor's uh, mid game with orc spam, which is for free, is coming in clutch. Gondo is or was able to buy heavy armor first, uh, he has only two Gondor Knights, if I'm not mistaken, right? Let me check. Yeah, he has only two Gondor Knights. Uh, maybe he should have gone for the third to get the stable to level two to be able to get the Night Shield. Hobbit has been taken down. The creep is going to be still secured, but the troll is already on the field. Karuskas is asking for Warchan. Warchan is going to be used. The burst damage is coming in clutch, and the creep is going to be indeed secured by the Gonzo player Karuskas. As well as the money, the tre treasure is being collected. The troll is on the hand. He will be actually turning now on the orcs to try to help out the Gonda player to keep this farm protected. But the farm is going to be taken down regardless, either from the orcs or from the troll after he's done killing those orcs. And looks like meat back on the money, boys. The farm has been taken down. The troll is on the rampage. Ladies and gentlemen, Dunedain asking his ally to capture this one to get even more money. He knows his ally is in a bad spot, but he also has now a troll cage. Industry has been used. I believe this is the industry from his ally, yeah. Because the motor player has not, this motor player has not industry just yet. So Dunedain, the orange motor player is helping out. He has also Haradrim Palace level 2, which will give him the chance to recruit the soldiers of Rune, which are acting like a pikeman from Isengard. So great against the Gondor Knights, and also extremely tanky, despite the fact that you can't upgrade them with heavy armor or forge blades. Indeed, the only upgrade on Mordor generally is either fire arrow on the orc archers or the banner. But that's it. You have no forge blades. You have no heavy armor or possibility. Because Mordor doesn't need that. Mordor is a faction which is working exclusively with the massive leadership you are able to build up. And also with monsters. Remember, orcs are only good for pressuring, for being annoying. But this is never going to be your primary army, you know? Your primary army is going to be either trolls or Nazgûls or Witch King or even Mumakirs. But never orcs. Orcs will fall off big time in the mid to late game against any faction. Rohirrim, Gondor Knights, even Isengard Berserkers are gonna be able to one-shot them. Armory is finally coming up for the Isengard player. The mill is still secured. We have three power points collected. 2,000 resources available. Which means he is able to get to the point in, you know, power point-wise at least, to recruit Gandalf the Grey and turn him into the Gandalf the White. Industry has been used also from Isengard. The map control is actually looking great for the double motor team. Money-wise, they will also need, of course, the Witch King. The Nazgûls will be needed to be able... I mean, that's the power of Eisen, uh, Mordor, you know, in the mid to late game. Especially in super late game, you are able to get three flyers. And the combination of two Mordor means you have six flying heroes around. Which is a nightmare to deal with. Especially map control wise. Because you can't be everywhere with Ganzaf. You can't be everywhere with your combos. And you will eventually lose your entire map control. And potentially even your base. Because if six Nazgûls come to your Gondor castle, they can take it down. You need to build multiple towers just to be, you know, in a safe spot. The protection is real. We have now Forge Blades purchase as well as Heavy Armor. But once again, he has only two Gondor Knights. 
and he's definitely trying to save for Gandalf, but his money and resource income isn't looking that great because he was also giving up, giving up the settlement from himself to his ally. So he has, uh, I think he has zero farms outside, right? Yeah, he has absolutely no farms outside, so his money is looking really bad. And look at that, the model player is preparing for an attack. The castle is going to be targeted. Haruskas is asking for help, he's gonna place the Green Isengard player, his ally is gonna place those crossbow men on top of the wall. And two trolls all alone is gonna be a risky move, there is one more coming. But trust me, this crossbow men are gonna take in, get taken down in a single shot. The troll with the tree in his hands is able to hit them as you guys can see. And with the drama troll, he is able to level up like crazy, because drama troll gives you 200% combat experience. I is adding up on that for 300% combat experience. The wall, the towers, everything is going to fall in a couple of seconds. Can the Gondor player defend himself in a such strong push from the model player? And even if yes, I believe the model player is still able to buy a lot of time from his ally for his ally. His ally is going to get the full map control because drawing attention is gonna force his defense. The Alvin allies is gonna put him behind and look that, you know, he was forced to build trebuchets, multiple towers, that's gonna of course cost him a lot of cash, which will delay his Gandalf to grey, since he doesn't even have the power points now for Gandalf to wait. Lourdes is also on the field, Lourdes is only level 4, level 5 is needed for the leadership part, you can always throw your sword and use carnage once you are level 3, the trolls are going down one by one, there are a lot of towers, the drama troll was not nearby, Without Drama Troll, Trolls are not as tanky and as strong as you guys might think. But in the meantime, please take a look into the minimap, guys. Please take a look into the map control. This is looking such, you know, so great for the double model team. Uh, but I believe this push is going to cost them also a lot of money. You know, Trolls are extremely expensive units and they cost almost a thousand each, like 900 each. Uh, maybe should have waited for the Witch King. I mean, I guess he wanted to make a move before Gandalf comes on the field, or before Isengard gets stronger and stronger. But if you don't can't, if you can't, I don't can't English by the way. If you can't uh, finish off the base, it's kind of feeding progress. You know, look at the Scandalites now; they're highly leveled. Even Peregrine took is moving with them. He's brave indeed. What is this model player doing in the meantime? He's going for the Witch King. Finally, he's making a move. Uh, he has double Orc Pit to pressure. The Isengard play all the time. Isengard was able to upgrade or to buy upgrades from the armory. So fire arrows purchase, heavy armor purchase, and also banner is purchased. Banner is needed in this matchup because banner gets your level, uh, gets your units to level two, which will grant them automatically fear resistant, which is very needed against Screech from Nazgul or the Witch King. You know. Okay, so be careful about the situation. Because crushing the evil base with trolls all alone is gonna be kinda risky. The evil base has a lot of towers. And everything is gonna be a tower once the buildings are hitting le level 3. And also furnaces are extremely tanky. Remember they are the tankiest resource buildings in the game alongside with the blacksmiths from the Gondor faction. But they are also able to level up faster than the blacksmiths from Gondor faction. It takes ages if you, can, if you guys don't know to get a level um, 1 blacksmith to level 3. It takes ages, almost 20 minutes. Uh, which is kind of sad because the farms are getting to level 3 way way faster, look at that. He was building them at the same time, you see level 2 and this is level 3 long time now. 5000 health for level 3 farm and 4500 health for level 2 blacksmith. But once it's level 3 it's gonna hit level, uh, hits, it's gonna have 6500 health just like this uh, furnace. And pretty pretty tanky. But furnaces are of course still better because they are gonna act like a tower. That's the Good thing about the evil faction since they have no walls unlike Rohan and Gondor. The Witch King is on the field. Is Gandalf coming yet? Uh, Gandalf is getting recruited. We have double Witch King by the way. This Witch King was taking so much damage from the Lords. Cripple from Lords also hurts him big time. Double trouble. Double Witch King, double trouble ladies and gentlemen. Darkness has been used from uh, the motor player Dunatine, Which is granting you and your ally for the entire map 33% damage, 50% armor for 3 minutes. For everyone, by the way, orcs, every unit, woman kills, trolls, everyone is able to achieve this leadership. Gandalf the White is here for a show match between himself and the Witch King. Witch King knows that and he has to ditch now. Oh, it's a bit too late and Easter Light is gonna be able, never mind, the Witch King is flying for his life. Run, fly you fools. That's what Gandalf was trying to say, by the way, in Fellowship of the Ring. He was talking about this scene. To Witch King, fly you fool, fly away from me. <laughs> okay, he's gonna miss the lightning swords now, unfortunately. 
And without lightning, uh, lightning Sword and Easter Light, he won't be able to match with the trolls. But the good thing about Easter Light is, as you guys could see, if they are clumped like that, you are able to hit multiple units at the very same time. So Gandalf is level 5. Wasn't able to kill anything by himself. But look at the Gondor base. It's turning to more like a mortar base. <laughs> That's crazy. Everything has been taken down. He has actually money problems too. But Mordor team, they are so rich now. You know, I would love to see Catapults. I would love to see additional Nazguls. It would be so nice to see them winning that. Because it's a very bad matchup for them in long terms. Because the second Isengard player is able to get the Freezing Rain. Which he has already unlocked from the Spellbook. Means your Darkness, your Eye, your Drama Troll. Everything is getting shut down completely. Right. That's an Elven Ally summon. Which you also... You, you can't burst him down from 100 to 0 with Easter Light all alone. So you need either to hit both Easter Light and also your Lightning Sword. Or you will need help to get him low to be able to finish him off. So by the way, if you don't know, two uh, Smites are able to kill him. Smite deals exactly 50% health of the Witch King. Easter Light deals a bit more. So Smite and Easter Light is also enough to kill him from you know 100 to 0. Freezing Rain has been used, and that's the time for Isengard Gondor team to shine. Freezing Rain is the best counter. Okay, Easter Light has been used, but once again, Witch King is tough. He's not as weak as a Nazgul. I mean, Witch King is still not the greatest hero uh, because of his durability. He's, he feels extremely squishy. Uh, I wish he would be a bit more tanky because he's the most expensive hero money-wise. 8,000 will be needed to recruit uh, Witch King of Engna. And he has also no abilities, but the leadership is very nice. In a large area, which means, like, it's a big aura, you know, like, really big. You are able to give, like, in this kind of circle, leadership. So you don't need to be even staying close or flying close to the enemy or to the allied unit, sorry. Lourdes is also level 6 now. So Isengard has now Warchan plus Lourdes. That means 110% increased damage. And when Gandalf is nearby and, you know, Warchan, you'll have also 100% increased armor and 200% combat experience. And also Saruman can, might be recruited later on. What I always like to do, and what I always do when I'm actually playing Gondor and Isengard, and I'm the Gondor one, I'm always recruiting Boromir and Faramir, and trying to keep them with the Isengard army, because Faramir and Boromir, they have also crazy amount of leadership bonuses, especially Boromir, he needs only one level to unlock 60% leadership, you know, damage leadership, just like Lourdes. So, and that's gonna add up all together. Remember, in uh, BFMU1, every unique leadership is able to stack. So you can stack two Lourdes, two Saruman, but you can stack Lourdes, uh, Gandalf, you know, Aragorn, Theorin, everyone which is unique can be stacked with each other. Big War Chant, Crossbowmen is a smart move. Crossbowmen are fast, faster than combos. And in this matchup, you don't really need. Oh, be careful. Never mind. He knows Easter Light is on cooldown. So playing around the cooldowns from your opening is actually very smart. And now look at this, ladies and gentlemen. Three Nazgul's are on the hand. Look, that's gonna have heal. Yes, he has heal. So he shouldn't be too worried about that. He needs to use it now. Now. Oh, was he on cooldown? I think it was on cooldown like two seconds. And guys, 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 guys. Gandalf the White has been taken down. Reviving him is going to cost you a lot. But he has statues. Now, when the statue is going down, you see, it's getting more and more expensive. Because statues are giving you the hero bonus. When you have up to four, you will get 30% discount. Which is pretty nice to recruit or revive expensive heroes like Aragorn, Gar you know, Gandalf, Gimli, Legolas. Those heroes are actually quite expensive. Indeed, if you guys don't know, for example, Gandalf, as you guys know, probably you know, uh, costs you 6,000 to be recruited from Battle for Middle Earth 1, from Gondor. But if you have 4 statues, you can reduce the cost to 4,200 only. So you save 1,800 resources, which is a lot. Level 10 Gondor Knights are trying to get away. Witch King should not overcommit, and he knows that he's gonna fly back. This is a smart Witch King, not like the one from the films, who was underestimating his opponent, and, uh, you know... Elvin was able to kill. Which was kind of sad though, because he was the really biggest villain. They were kind of pushing up in the third film, in the in the Return of the King, right? And I was expecting like a great battle between him and Gandalf the White. It would be awesome. Because also, we, don't, we didn't see anything from Gandalf the White. I mean, besides, uh, you know, releasing the spell from Tyrion in Helm's Deep. Or in, in Edoras, actually, it was, sorry. Uh, he did not do much. Alright, Catapult is inside the base tanking. Catapult is, if you guys know, if you guys don't know, oh, the Witch King. If you guys don't know, Catapult is extremely tanky against normal arrows. Unless they have fire, they can tank this forever. The Witch King has been taken down. In the meantime, it looks like this modder team, this modder player is trying to go for a commitment. Isengard's units inside his own base, but also inside the base from his ally. 
and Boromi is on the field once again very smart because there's a passive leadership oh but the rain and that's the time for the trolls to not shine and the witch king is literally blown up and look at that Boromir is level 5 Warchant statue plus plus Boromir guys 100 person from the statue alone 50 from uh, Warchant and 60 from Boromir dude that's 210 person combat experience and Lurz was not even seen close by nearby yet so lots of damage and on top of that you are able to cut the leadership from the enemy team entirely with your freezing rain so it's a win-win situation how open wise how close are they to Balrog so the, one of the modern players needs 12 Gondo needs a little bit less than a quarter for the for the eagle summon which can also be game changing because as far as I can see they have nothing that can deal with the giant eagles nothing no combos I mean only the Nazgûs are able to attack them so the eagles can kill every single troll every single catapult in no time and that's what you need to do in this matchup. Oh, the Nazgul has been taken down from Gandalf the White, who's almost level 7. That's what you need to do in this matchup. As sec as the second you use Phrasing Rain, you gotta make a move. Because you need to use that to your advantage, you know? What's the matter if you use Phrasing Rain and you just wait until it's gone, you know what I'm saying? So, trolls are extremely strong once they have leadership from Witch King, from Blackness, from Eye of Sauron, from the Drummer Troll, but as long as the freezing rain is active they're gonna die in a single shot from the crossbowman and a single hit from the eagles eagles is a massive power point from the gondor faction against mordor and also against any other faction because eagles are having crazy amount of dps they can even kill balrog you know they are dealing so much damage like a hero from like gondor for example will also get like two shotted from each eagle they need to attack him twice each eagle and he's gone Faramir is on the field the brothers of Gonzo, the captains of Gonzo. This outpost is gonna be taken down next, and Mordor is like I was kinda assuming falling behind in this 2v2 match against Gondor Isengard. Because double Mordor, you have you are you have limited limitations, you know what I'm saying? You have like the same faction twice, it's never gonna give you the same thing like having two separate factions in Battle for Middle of One. Because especially when you combine evil and good faction boys. Which means you have well for the statue, for the, for the sustain. You have additional heroes, additional power points from this spellbook. So you have like two brains, dif completely different factions, which can have crazy amount of synergy, like evil and good. Because what's the weakness of the evil faction? The lack of sustain. And good faction can offer you that. The outpost has been captured now by Isengard. This one is under control from Gondor. We have level 10 Gondor Knights. Gandalf is level 7. Darkness has been used and the commitment once again now. I believe, yeah, the freezing, as long, as soon as you can see them glowing, you know the freezing rain is on cooldown. Drama Troll is not nearby though, I mean he's nearby, but without Witch King, they, they are not tanky enough, I believe. Yeah, Land has been used, Gandalf is driving in with the Gondor Knights to kill those catapults, he knows that's the Nightmare of Isengard. Isengard is forced to disengage, but that's the good, good part about this uh, crossbowman, because they are kind of mobile, much, much more faster than the combos and again combos are only needed against any other faction but mordor mordor has uh, com what is combo good for combo is good for when you need units which can tank stuff in the front line but you cannot tank trolls you cannot tank uh you know catapults that's not possible you can tank gondor knights you can take enemy combos you can tank heroes but not trolls because they have three most of the time in their hands they will one shot your front line and the bad thing about the combination is, of course, you lose DPS because you are wasting your command points for like a unit in the front line, which is doing nothing but standing there. And also you are losing a lot of movement speed bonus. So you need to make a smart move. You need to make a great choice and you need to think about the matchup. And don't do the same thing in every single game. Try to adapt your play gameplay to the matchup you are playing in, you know? Level 10 Gondor Knights, everything is shining bright like a diamond. There is, there is one Orc Battalion actually, they are uh, fighting against each other because they are bored. Uh, is Witch King back yet? Yeah, this Witch King is back, this Witch King is here I believe. Yeah, they have two Witch Kings but this is gonna be enough to fight this because once again they have massive leadership boys. Farami is almost level 5 which will also, also unlock his leadership. Trolls are getting literally one-shotted and so does the Witch King. The damage is going to be crazy. Lightning Sword is going to be used from Gandalf. But don't tank too much, you know, don't tank too much because once again, look at this base from the model player. Everything is level 3. Every slaughterhouse is going to act like a tower, you know. And on top of that, you have also the sentry tower shooting you down. Of course, you have massive leadership, but your armor isn't the greatest as long as Gandalf is not nearby. 
but I mean, it has to be level 5. Okay, darkness has been used, but that means also freezing rain is going to be available. Yeah, freezing rain is still active. Uh, it's working for 3 minutes. So even if you use darkness after freezing rain was used initially, you will have to wait until the 3 minutes over. This is a misleading description, by the way. It shrouds the entire map. And also the cloud break is a misleading ex uh, explanation. Your weather changing abilities like darkness or cloud break isn't able to cancel the effect of freezing rain. There is only one single way you can cancel that, and that's when you step on the enemy lands. But this only, on, also only works on infantry and cavalry units, not on monsters like trolls or mummikers, you know? They can't receive leadership back for three full minutes, which can be a really long time. Easter light will be used, and the Nazgul is getting buried straight down with the help of the Elven allies. You can see the warning arrow doesn't hurt the Witch King at all, but it would chunk the Nazgul for uh, quite a bit, you know? 11 power points, the suffer game has begun. Uh, they need to wait for the for the cooldowns. Donadine, the I, the motor player, the orange one at the bottom right side, has almost a Balrog summon. But even if you kill the Gondor base, you need to keep in mind that he has outpost here. And he won't be defeated for that reason. He won't be defeated. Is he still in the game? Yeah, he's still in the game. I was confused because everything looks green, you know. Also, this base, he has units inside that base too. Okay. So, oh, there comes the... Yeah, that's a, that's a problem, you know. You have nothing that can deal with the Eagles. You have no combos. You gotta get some combos, I believe. One of the modern players have, has to get some combos. Don't underestimate them. Because they are not strong individually. But again, with the insane leadership, when the freezing rain is on cooldown, they can deal incredible amount of damage. The Eagles gonna get blown up in a single shot. Boromir, the captain of Kondo, and Faramir, who is trying desperately to show his quality one more time. Everything is falling apart, ladies and gentlemen. And Mordor is in prison, is in jail. He is not able to leave the base. Because the second he leaves the base, he sees eagles, he sees rain, he sees a huge Isengard army, Easter Light on the, on the Witch King, who is barely able to survive. The eagle might be able to finish him off. But once again, many, many towers. The Witch King, don't run it down. One shot, and he's gone yeah. How long for Bal Balrog? That's the big question. Two power points only. Darkness has been used, but as you can see and tell, the motor player doesn't have too much inside the base. What is this motor player doing? He's trying to send some help to his ally. Look at this. That's what I was trying to see at the beginning of the game. You see? No trees around. Look, they need to walk like to Afghanistan or something to cut some trees. You know what I'm saying? All right. Uh, huge, huge buff. Saruman is also on the field now for even more armor leadership. Holy guacamole, guys. Tanky and hitting like a truck. And also with Gandalf and Saruman being, you know, nearby, they will hit level 10 in no time. I see, I see you. Trolls are diving in. Kill Saruman. Kill Saruman. Saruman can steal them potentially. That's going to be also his plan. Fight for me. But, oh, actually he was outplaying himself, my dude. He was outplaying himself. This troll was all about to smash Saruman. But as the Witch King was attacking him, Oh, wait, look, you see, heal has been used. Boromir is also like saying, Saruman, I got you. I'm saving you. Saruman is not turning and using Fireball. He's gonna be in a safe spot. Smart and very good move there from Karuskas. He was healing the allies, Saruman. But the Balrog is now available, boys. He might use it for defense, though, because he has nothing else to defend himself anymore. And that's gonna be also his plan. The Balrog of Morgoth, Durin's Bane, ladies and gentlemen, is in them in the jeans okay but the thing is uh, you have now no chance of finishing off the gondor castle anymore but you can kill an outpost maybe even fish a hero like saruman with the whip you can try to take him down breath fire will be used which is of course enough if it was if it was used nicely to destroy the base or the outpost radar by himself but the second balrog is he gonna be there in his time soon no he is still six power points away from that Double ba double ba can't even talk. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> double Balrog would be the win condition, definitely, because the one Balrog could be used for defense, like he did, and the other one could be used for the offense to take down the entire castle. You know, double Balrog, you have no chance. Okay. So darkness is available, but what's the matter? Because freezing ra freezing rain is gonna counter it anyway, and also this Isengard play RPO is like three power points and a half away from his own Balrog summon. Oh, use. Pew! <laughs> Oh, just before he's gone, I, it's like, just like in the films, you know, he's like, I'm taking you with me, Gandalf, you know? Alright, but one of the wizards was able to survive. We have Faramir, Boromir, Peregrine, Tuk is even trying to join the battle. 
He wants to see the glory days of Gondor, ladies and gentlemen, just like Faramir and Poromir. How long does the Gondor play need for Army of the Dead? Not long, two and a half power points only. And he has not even the money he needs for reviving Gondor, which is gonna cost him 2080. Even more would be the case if he would have not those st statues. The trolls are diving in, but once again, smart move with the Tainted Land. Tainted Land is working like the freezing rain. And uh, this wizard is popping off, by the way. Unfortunately, he has no level 10. And uh, you know, uh, and also in Bifemi 2 or in Rise of the Witch King, heroes like Witch King, of course, are just much more impactful. Because Witch King has Morgul Blade, has the Hour of Witch King ability. Here, he's like a sportive hero. And of course, the Dominate, uh, the Warm Tongue, sorry, from Saruman can be game changing. Now, uh, the, the difference between BFME 1 and BFME 2, and there are of course many many differences, is that heroes, certain heroes, are able to join the fight with being level 5 immediately. You know, like Aragorn for example is level 5 the second you recruit him, which means he, have, he has access to Atelas, Blade Master, Leadership, and even a land deal. Everything is unlocked the second he joins. Witch Kings and Nazgûls are level 10 instantly when they come. Same to Saruman, he's level 5 immediately when he comes. That means he has access to all the power points, just like Gandalf, who is only missing out the War of Power, you know? Unlike in BFME 2, in which every hero is coming with level 1, and you need to level them up manually. Does he have Baldrock yet? Actually, RPO, the Isengard player, is really close. Mordor player, the purple one, needs still 3 power points. But Army of the Dead will be special summon now inside the base of the orange Mordor player, Dunedain. Eagle summon. Make sure to use AOD first. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking because AOD is able to tank those towers all day long. They are not taking damage from the towers. And when you summon the Eagles first, they're gonna get aggroed from the towers and they're gonna be taken down in no time. So now the model player should be selecting all the buildings manually and right click on the Eagle if he wants to be able to kill them. But I think it's not gonna be possible anymore. And what a great match it was. Gonzo Isengard, they almost lost. Great defense. Look at the Gondor base, by the way. It was looking, or it is still looking like a like an Isengard or Mordor base. But it was just not enough to finish off the base. As the base is falling apart, I think that's going to be the game winning move. Because I believe the Isengard player is also now his own Balrog. Now nah, he's still one power open away. I mean, this Mordor player was actually doing a good job. Uh, the Balrog was kind of needed to use defensively. Because they had no chance of defending themselves otherwise. If he would be able to coordinate that with his ally, uh, this game would be ending for Gonzo. But it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. It was a great match regardless. And game is over, guys. Uh, the Moro team has been defeated. Gondor and Isengard are victorious on this map. Let me know your comments in the comment section down below. What do you think about this map? And would you like to see different maps other than Anorian all the time? Thank you guys so much for watching. If this was enjoyable for you, please don't forget to leave a like on this video. And also... Uh, follow me on my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash Beyond Standards, if you would like to see me live. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves and as always, stay Beyond Standards. Peace out.